Alright, so in this problem, I have 8 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 30. So I'm going to first start by rewriting 8 as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 30. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So I can switch the places of n and m. So in this case, I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, and I'm going to switch the places of 3 and x. So I get 2 to the power of x to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 30. Now, I'm going to let the variable u equal 2 to the power of x. So now if I substitute in u for 2 to the power of x, I get u to the power of 3 plus u is equal to 30. And now I can subtract 30 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get u to the power of 3 plus u minus 30 is equal to 0. Now we have an equation here, and we need to find what value of u makes this equation equal to 0. So what I'm going to do to start is rewrite 30 as 27, negative 27 minus 3. And the reason I did this is because 27 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 3. Notice how we use something in the form u to the power of 3 plus u. We could think of u as 3 in this case. So 27 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 3. And we have this minus 3. Now I'm going to put this in the form u to the power of 3 minus 3 to the power of 3 plus u minus 3 is equal to 0. So now, if I put this in parentheses real quick, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, this turns into u minus 3 times u squared plus 3u plus 9 plus u minus 3, which is equal to 0. And now, because both of these terms have a common factor of u minus 3, if I factor out u minus 3, I get u minus 3 times u squared plus 3u plus 9 plus 1 is equal to 0. And now from here, 9 plus 1 is 10, so I get u minus 3 times u squared plus 3u plus 10 is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get u minus 3 is equal to 0, and I get u squared plus 3u plus 10 is equal to 0. So u minus 3 equals 0. That's pretty easy to solve. All I have to do is add 3 on both sides and I get u is equal to 3. Now remember how we let u equal to 2 to the power of x, meaning 2 to the power of x is equal to 3. And now to solve this, I'm going to start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 3. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 2 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 2 is equal to log 3. And now if I divide both sides by log 2, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 3 over log 2. Now, log 3 is equal to 0 0.4771, and log 2 is equal to 0 0.301, meaning this is equal to 1.539. Now, going back over here, 
we have u squared plus 3u plus 10 equals 0. And let's use the quadratic formula to solve this. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 3, and c is 10. So I get u is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this gets me negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times 10, which is 40, all over 2, which is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 31 over 2. Now, the square root of negative 31, that's a negative number, so that doesn't work, meaning my only solution is 1.539. All right, so in this problem, I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. So I actually have two methods to solve this problem. So for method one, First, start by rewriting this, 500 squared minus 499 squared. And, well, first off, I'm going to rewrite 500 squared. So 500 squared, this is the same thing as 499 plus 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 499 and b equals 1. So this turns into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 499 squared plus 998 plus 1. And remember, at the end here, I have negative 499 squared. So now we can add that back in. And 499 squared minus 499 squared, these two cancel out. So I'm left with 998 plus 1. And this is equal to 999. So that is the first method of solving this problem. Now for method 2, Now we are on a problem, 500 squared minus 499 squared. And now this time, in last time we wrote, we wrote 500 squared, right? This time I'm going to rewrite 499 squared. So 499 squared is the same thing as 500 minus 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 500 and b is 1. So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 2 times 500 plus, sorry, minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus 1 squared. And this simplifies to 500 squared minus 1,000 plus 1. And now we can go back and 
replace 499 squared with this. So we get 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 1,000 plus 1. And this is all in parentheses, by the way. So now, this is equal to 500 squared. And now we're going to distribute the negative sign. So if I distribute the negative sign, that's basically like multiplying these terms by negative 1. So negative 1 times 500 squared is negative 500 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1,000 is positive 1,000. And negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Now these two 500 squares cancel out, so I'll be left with 1,000 minus 1, and 1,000 minus 1 is 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer.